so our JB weld has hardened overnight here on this water pump housing and this is very strong now incredibly strong I'm gonna grind this off See the impellers turning? Everything looks like it's in good shape, so I think this water pump's gonna work good. Now we're on to our next piece here. This is the uh, lab metal, the aluminum, and it's really stuck. This thing's solid. Now we gotta get this straightened out. As you can see it, it machines, looks just like aluminum when it's done, it's amazing.
By the way, I'm going to, um, I got to put another layer on here. Uh, I'm going to put a link for this Alvin Lab Metal in the description so everybody can uh, buy this.
All right, um, so this is the spark plug wire tray and distributor and magneto cap assembly. This is how you take it out of the fire truck. When you redo this, if you have an antique fire truck, doesn't matter what it is, Sea Grave, America of France, Buffalo, whatever, um, it's gonna have something probably similar to this or just a tube with the spark plug wires coming out. There's a reason they did that and it's important is to keep the spark plug wires from abrading against something or melting on something that's hot. So you're gonna to wanna to try to mimic this if you don't have it, try to find an original or make something that's like, that's like this kind of. Um, but if you have this system, you're gonna to wanna to remove the whole thing off the truck like this and you're gonna to wanna to replace all your spark plug wires. These as in a previous video I showed are really, when I mean, you just go like this, you can see they just crack and break. Um, it's all shot. So um, we're gonna go through redoing this whole thing. I am not going to replate this. This is supposed to be uh, actually um, chrome plated, this whole entire unit. Uh, I don't want to do that on this truck because it's a patina restoration. So I'm gonna kind of go through and try to maybe shine this up a little bit and then, uh, you know, call it good. So um, let's get started. This is another thing too I want to show real quick. Um, here's an organizer. If you've got an antique fire truck, uh, regardless of what you're doing, um, you're going to want to get a bunch of these at Home Depot. Buy these things. They're cheap. They're like 10 bucks a piece or 8 bucks a piece, whatever they are. And whether it's, you know, fittings for, uh, I do a lot of restorations here, so I have lots of supplies for this type of thing and many others. But if you're redoing a truck and you need to organize stuff for your restoration or maintenance on the truck, spare parts, whatever, uh, get yourself one of these. I'll put a link in the description to this, uh, to this organizer. Now, when you're taking apart this, pulling these wires out, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, uh, don't take this all apart and in a million pieces because you're not gonna figure out how to put it back together with the wiring order. One trick is to get a piece of paper and mark it down, which I'm gonna do here. And um, I, I was just looking at this here, trying to decipher which spark plug bank of wires goes to which thing. I believe the one with this style connector on it here is all for the magneto because you only have six of those. And then the 12 here are this style here. Um, they put a different style end here on each one of these wires. It's a 90 degree. And these here are all straight. So I think they did that so you could tell which uh, set of plugs is which uh, down here. So I'm going to do that, get a piece of paper and write that down. And you look at your distributor cap and on a magneto this one here is actually uh stamped with a one right here 
So this should be cylinder one. So I'm gonna follow this wire and push and pull. See if I can take this off. Show you how these distributor caps work. There's a um, there's a hole in here with screws for each spark plug wire connection, and there's a screw with a point on it, and it digs into the wire. So that's how this works. So you have to take all these little screws out, and you can slide these wires out of this Bakelite uh, distributor cap. You can see all the contacts are inside here all the way around in a circle. So number one slides in here and attaches to this screw, which is this contact right here. So number one is gonna be in this quadrant up here, all right? So um, I believe this distributor rotates clockwise, so that's gonna be, um, it's gonna be one, five, three, six, two, four, I believe. I want to clean up these screws. Take out number one. I'm gonna fish and see which one's number one. And as you can see, Number one's right here. It's pulling through and it goes over to here. And it's gonna go to, actually, it goes to these plugs here, which I'm surprised at. It's these straight end plugs. And I just assumed that the plugs on the side of the cylinder head were the magneto, but they're not. It's one, one of the sets on the top is the magneto. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So the ones that are straight, like this are all magneto so we're gonna um, pull them out and we're gonna replace them right now you do this one at a time these this uh, style end here has a um, you unscrew this piece it's got a point on it, like a like a a, a bee uh, stinger, and you pull this off, and it's like a, a cap, and the wire is cut off bare, and it sticks inside, and this pointed part goes in and pinches the wire between the inside of this and this, so you make contact, and you can um, take this apart and reuse it. It's a reusable fitting.
So I just tumbled all these in the tumbler and you can see how nice they come out. They're like brand new. It's a really, really great machine to have. If you don't have one, you're doing a bunch of restoration work, get yourself a tumbler. I'll put that in the description of this video as well. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a couple things here. Um, I was working on these wires and uh, the distributor cap, they all popped out. Now I lost where they go. So um, if that happens to you, it's not the end of the world. You can still figure it out. Um, I'm gonna leave all these here like this and then I'm going to um, put this back on the truck and then figure out, okay, Number one that comes down here is going to go on here, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, line it up and it'll work. So um, it takes a little bit of work, but um, I'm going to go through and how to do that. Um, in the meantime, I bead blasted the cap here, went through and cleaned all these connections, and I cleaned the inside here. I spot bead blasted all these uh, contacts. You cannot get one of these, so if you have an antique fire truck and you have this on there, be very careful. Do not lose your distributor cap or break it or damage it. Uh, and especially the rotor, which is right here. Uh, you know, you don't want to lose this because, you know, you can't get these at Napa. So, anyway. Also, I cleaned up this tube. Got all the connections clean here. Ready to go for the water on our uh, water pump project where we had that problem. This is all clean, ready to go. So... Um, give this a little bit of a polish and here's the uh, water return for the rear of the engine this is the rear one and uh, it's in really nice shape I cleaned the bottom of it there's no cracks there's no problems with this one at all it's in perfect shape so uh, that was kind of nice you only have to repair two out of three and uh, I've got the other two drying still from earlier so um, we'll uh, start polishing that other piece Hold that. Hold it. Hang on. Hang on, I'm trying. I got a chunk. Okay. Oh. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Big pieces of debris the chunks in, coming out. in the bottom. Oh, yeah. There we go. Look at that. A little iron in there. That's coming out clear now. There you go, there's a little more. There's still some chunks caught in the hole there. Let that come out for a second. I try this back one. 
Oh yeah, look at that one. Look toward the rear. That's clean in the front. Hit that rear. Yeah. Wow. Well, when you hit the back of that cylinder, it really pushes out a lot of... Really? Oh, it's unbelievable how much is on the back side. I'm glad I'm doing this. I mean, it's... Well, there's chunks of uh, metal in the hole over here. Uh, you got stuff coming out there. See the chunk? Yeah, go ahead. See if you can... There you go. That back one wasn't done. The back one uh, still got more coming out. Oh yeah, look at the ground. Uh, Wow, look at that, oh my gosh. Wow, look at all that rust. This washer's coming out of the motor. This washer's coming out of the motor. It's a lot of iron. I'd say that rear one needs a little, a little better. Oh yeah, you just hit it. Here, mud. Here, you come over here and I'll do that. All right. Oh, yeah, this is some junk. Yep. Wow. It's going to cool good now, though. If I move it around, does it? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. In the front, it's pretty clear, right? Yeah. But this thing is going to cool really good. Let's try this side again. Okay. You should have seen it back right here before. It was crazy. The amount of that come out of there. What's that doing? Ah, uh, that's clean. Clean? That's looking good. I think you got it. Yeah, number two is good. Two and three are. Uh, the three and four cylinder are good. Yeah, that looks good. That's real clean. Yeah. That one looks pretty clean. Yeah. How about one and two? That's clean. Uh, you got some uh, some rust there. I found out of the pocket. A little bit. Now it's clean. Yep. All right, now we can go back to three. Is that one again? Yeah. That's pretty good. Pretty clean. Uh, there's some rust. Depends on which direction you need. It's pretty clean. I mean, a lot of it came out. Yeah. Try the try the front of it. Hmm? Try shooting in the front there a little bit. Yeah, the fronts were all clean. Uh, a little bit of stuff came out. Yeah. Okay, now it's clean. I think we got it, man. Good? Yeah, I think we got it. Beautiful. Barry, let's drain this radiator out of rust or whatever's going to come out. That looks really clean. Let me move it around. All right, see what that does. Still clean? Yep. Nothing wrong with that radiator. All right. Not even, not even filling up. Just All right. Barely trickling out the back of the tank. Well, that's lucky. Now that you cooled it off, we'll see if it'll start. Yeah.
Check out that steam coming out already. Just from running for a minute. Okay, everybody. So, had some progress made on the 1930 America of the France here. And it's been two steps forward, one step back. So, I want to show you what I got done and what kind of didn't work out so great. So, let me uh, grab the camera here. I'll show you. This is one of the aluminum housings that I attempted to repair the other day that I showed everybody. I used lab metal on this and it did not work at all. Um, I thought it was going to be this magical thing that clamps the aluminum together or uh, adheres it together and it was going to work really well but uh, I tried clamping this down uh, with some RTV and it just cracked right in the same spot and just broke right, fell right apart. So um, here's a couple chunks here too. So that didn't work out too great. Um, over here, this rear cylinder five and six water collector, this was undamaged and it went right back on, no problem. There's no cracks, everything was good. So that was a success there. Here's the middle one, which is already broken, I showed you, and here is the front one, which might look nice, but right down there, as you can see, it's cracked, and it broke when I tried to tighten up these screws, and I was really kind of bummed out, and so I ended up having to get a replacement, uh, some replacement water returns here uh, from a very good friend of mine, and uh, he has a lot of antique fire truck parts, and that was really cool. So I got the hookup. Those are on their way here. They are solid brass. They are not aluminum and they're the better ones. So I'm gonna change out all three and those will all be the same and awesome. So that's gonna fix that problem. Um, in the future, I would love to 3D print these and get these cast new out of aluminum and but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Uh, work on that. Uh, I'll work on that project a little bit later. So, um, moving on here to the belt. We talked in the beginning of this um, this whole process on this truck, changing the belt on uh, the early fire engines here. It's pretty simple to do. Let me see if I can find my flashlight. Here we go. So, right here. There is a threaded nut on the, um, on the pulley. And you get a close up here. You can see this is threaded. This half of the pulley here is threaded onto here. And this half of the pulley over here is fixed to the fan. So when you loosen this side here, it expands out and the belt gets falls down inside the V more, which allows you to remove it down here off of this pulley. So I had to take this bolt off, remove this, and take the old belt off. And I had brand new Gates belt here in stock. Uh, it's a 51 inch belt, which is a C47. Um, you always add you always add four inches to a belt number. Um, on standard V-belts. Uh, why they do that, I don't know. I don't know why they just call it a C51, but that's how they do it. So it's a C47, 51 inches long, and uh, that's just the right size for this truck. So it was very easy to change out, uh, nothing nothing fancy there. And um, just remind myself, I gotta get in there and grease that fan bearing right there too. There's a Zerk fitting, we gotta hit that. And uh, over here, I've got the uh, spark plug tray as you can see in the back there and I've got the uh, six cylinders hooked up for the magneto those that row of spark plugs there and now I need to go around the other side and hook up the uh, distributor cap and get that wiring figured out and then get the wiring on for these six spark plugs here and the other six spark plugs on the other side so that's the next task All right, so 
these are the ignition coils for the uh, for the engine here and these have the same threaded end in here as the spark plug connectors but uh, somebody's got some electrical tape so we're going to find out what's going on here these actually thread in just like the distributor caps they have a thread here and a little contactor on the end and this is uh something that can be reused so we're going to uh, clean this all up same thing over here yeah, this one's loose and i'm also going to come through and change out this wiring here this is uh not correct for this old truck i can't have this old or this new uh modern yellow red wire on here for uh, this nice old engine. We're going to have some nice cloth wire on here that matches this better. Um, I would use armored wire like this, but uh, um, right now, because of the supply chain problems, there's there's no armored wire available. So I'm going to uh, um, just deal with this separately. But we're going to replace this with some single cloth covered wire and uh, go from there. Okay, so we got these ends all nice and clean here and shiny, ready to go. By the way, if you're working on an antique truck or car, it's really handy to have a, um, oh geez, I think I got this thing stuck, a uh, set of nut drivers. If you've never seen these before, uh, they're easily available at your local hardware store or you go online, get a good pair, don't get the junky ones. Uh, the, the, the good quality ones, they're worth getting. This one I got from uh, McMaster Car, I believe it's a Pratt Reed, uh, Main USA. Um, I'll put a link in this description for this. Um, just a very nice tool. This is a 3 8 very common size on coils, uh, electrical connections under the dash. Super handy tool to have. This is just a common feed from one side of the one coil to the other, so you've got a common power lead here. This is coming from the uh, key, and then this is just connecting the two together so they're both on at the same time. The only thing that matters with these is which which coil is connected to which set of points on your distributor. This truck has a single distributor with dual points. So if you have these connected crisp backwards to the distributor, the ground, that's what a set of points is in a, a distributor. It's, it's, a, it's a ground. If you have them switched, it will spit and fart and pop and you'll never have it it'll never run because the one point is opening when the other one should be closing and it's backwards so you got to make sure you pay attention to that i made sure i marked that on these uh this coil here the outside coil goes to the inside connection the rear connection on the distributor and then the uh inside coil goes to the uh, front connection so um, i made sure i did that before i took it apart Okay, so I lied. I found some armored cable. So this is armored cable. If you've never seen it before, you've got the cloth wire inside and there is a wrap of tin around the outside to armor or protect the wire from being abraded. This is what they used on a lot of early cars and trucks uh, up into the, even into the 1940s they used this stuff and it works really well. Um, I think they got rid of it because they use more modern, cheaper materials, uh, easier manufacturing. Uh, this probably takes a little bit of time to make this uh, in a machine, but uh, uh, anyway, we're going to use this for the two spark plug leads that go to the um, coils, the ignition wires, and then we're going to use this piece of cloth wire here for the uh, little jumper that goes between the coils.
Okay, soldered on. And this end here, we're gonna leave bare so we can get through the conduit on the uh, spark plug tube. And then we'll put the connectors on after later so they don't get jammed inside. Now when you're wiring this, you want to have on these coils, the negative is on this side and the positive is on this side. These trucks are supposed to be positive ground. So the positive lead on your battery goes to the ground on the truck and then the negative lead goes to the power, which is down here on the starter switch and feeds the rest of the system up into the dash and your coils. So your uh, negative power, your negative is going to go to here and then your positive is gonna to go to the points. This was wired differently when I got it. Someone had stretched it and moved this wire and wired it the other way. Okay, everybody, I thought this was gonna be a three-part project with this truck to get it running and driving down the road. I got a little bit ahead of myself, but not too far. It's gonna be four parts. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoying the videos, and I know I'm going into a little bit of more detail than most sometimes, but uh, I wanna have everybody learn about this truck. If you have one of these, or you're just interested in it, um, I hope you're enjoying it and this fourth video is going to be the last one and we don't have a lot left I'm going to get those water collection pieces on that I'm that I'm getting from my buddy Andy and um, I'm going to finish putting a couple other items on here and we're going to take this thing for a ride so I'm looking forward to it stay tuned remember always keep that old iron running